Welcome to Wagered on Tilt to everyone. I am T and in today's video I wanted to try and start walking through the very basics of Python. Now in the previous video we went ahead and installed Python which is great and that was why it was such a short video. In this video I'm going to go through the very basics of Python and the similarities to the VBA that I've been teaching previously. So in this video we're going to kind of walk through how do you comment code that way you can put notes into your code. Um, how do variables store things? How does a for loop work? And then touch on a little bit how an if statement works. So again, a lot of this stuff is not necessarily going to be modeling exactly today. However, I want everybody to understand the core concepts that I'm gonna be using in other videos on how to do the modeling. If you can understand this, you're gonna have a snap breeze going through the rest of this stuff. It's very simplistic and that is one of the bonuses of Python. It's a very easy to learn language and it's extremely fast. So let's go ahead and dive on into learning the basics of Python for how I'm gonna teach modeling. All right, so like I mentioned before, this is going to be a very brief walkthrough on some of the things that you can do with Python. That way, when we actually get into modeling, we'll be able to see these uh, come full circle and have real great use cases. So here, um, we just have a random Python file that I just titled intro stuff.py. Uh, so that's .py. So all of your files that you're going to be running with Python and the videos I do are just .py files. That's going to be important because if you name it or use a different type, it probably won't work the same. So let's just go ahead and walk through a couple of the basic things that you can do. So if you're going to put a comment in, right, very similar to VBA, you're able to put in a comment. Here, when you want to put in a comment, you're actually just going to use the pound sign or, you know, in the hashtag sign and you can put in whatever comment you have. I have a comment. And that's a great way to document what your code is doing for yourself so that that way you don't get lost in the fray when you start having a lot of code written. And again, one of the great things about uh, Python is that it is similar to VBA in that I don't need to declare my variables immediately. And what that means is I don't have to say this variable is an integer type. It's not going to be a alpha type. It doesn't really matter what type it is and it can change on the fly as long as you follow some very loose rules that Python has. So I could say we have a variable called football catches and I'm going to set this one equal to 54. Then right below that, I can then change that and say football catches equals, and then when you put in text, uh, rather than doing quotes, you can use uh, double quotes or you can use single. I like using single, and we'll just say some player. So here, the code, if we executed this, would say, all right, first football catches equals 54, then it will say football catches is equal to some player, and then that's now what it's storing. So that is one of the nice things about this is you don't have to take time to declare what these are. You can just use them immediately. Now, one of the simplest things that we can always do within um, any kind of programming language is print something to the screen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write print, and then I'm just gonna pass in the variable football catches. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and run this. You can see it. And there, now it says some player. So that is one of the basic tools that you can do is print, right? So I like to print out the results of my models um, right now, especially while I'm testing them. Eventually I'll have them write them all to a separate file. And then that way I can just upload that file into something like unabated. But right now I'm just going ahead and printing them out and going, to, going one by one. So now that we've gotten that, if I wanted to do a bulk comment out, right? So you wanna get rid of some of your code, um, and block it out, we can do that. So if we go triple double quote, it'll go ahead and open it up and you'll see that this is all turned green and anything that's in there is now commented out. So if we were to rerun this code, nothing would execute because nothing is available to be run. So I do this if I have to write a lot of information about why I'm doing something or if I have an idea about, you know what, I wanna test this model later with a slight tweak to it, I'll put in what um, is like pseudo logic or pseudo code, and it basically is a bunch of claimed if then statements or what variables I wanna use. But this is useful for when you really need to jot down a lot of info quickly. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. 
So when you're wanting to compare something, you're going to want to go ahead and use the double equal sign. So in Python, again, if we say football is our new variable and we say equals five, this individual equals is for assigning things. So I'm saying I'm going to assign to football five. That's what the single equals does. But if we wanted to check something and see if something is equivalent, we would just say if football double equals five, print yay, and that is it. Now here we've also gone ahead and started doing something a little bit more complicated, which is uh, if statements. So in here, oops, forgot my colon. When you write things like ifs or loops with fours, you end the initial line with a colon, and that lets Python know, great, we're done with the logic that we need to perform this, we'll go down. Now, again, in the VBA videos, I always said that indenting is important because it's for programming reasons in the future, uh, that's why. So if something is nested below this if statement, it will execute that code as part of the if qualifier. So an example would be if I have this in here and I then have, um, you know, if the football value is equal to five, print yay, and then after that, regardless if the football is equal to five, I want it to print, um, print Super Bowl, right? I want it to print Super Bowl. So I want it to do that. Now, if I have it layered this way, these two values are only going to print out if football is equivalent to five. So if I go ahead and run this, and then I pull in, right? So it went ahead and print both of those because football is equal to five. Now, if I change this value here and I say it's actually equal to three, check the equivalency. Is it equal to three? And I run it. Code is executed and there's nothing there. Now, if I want to have this again print outside of this if statement, I need to go backwards, right? Because it's not indented anymore, which breaks this logic here. So this is now going to say, if football is equivalent to three, print yay. Either way, if it prints or not, then print Super Bowl. So then if I go ahead and click run and it runs the code again, we take a look, it now just says Super Bowl. So that is why this is going to be really important that, you know, you try and practice this, even if you're writing VBA, um, it, it'll be very useful for you to be able to nest these things correctly. And some of the files that you'll see up here, these are some of the models um, I've been toying around with. And when you start writing a lot of code, it's going to get more complicated. Now, right now, while we go through this initial series, I'm not going to show how to do functions. Functions are ways, uh, similar to VBA, to store lots of code and logic. And then up at the top of your code, you can easily call just your function, pass in the variable, and then it'll do the work. So it'll be similar to what we do in VBA, where we have multiple subroutines written. Um, that Think of a function that way. So let's go ahead and get rid of this. The next one is going to be a for loop. A for loop is pretty simple. So if we wanted to write that, we'd say for, and then you can just give this whatever kind of counter you want, similar to what we did in VBA, where we would say, you know, for X equals two to a thousand, or for Y, or for ZZ, or for R. It doesn't really matter. So in here, I'm just gonna call it something in. So what we would say is we'd write range zero comma and then put it in parentheses. So now it's gonna say start on zero and count through up to football, which is five. Now it can iterate through this. It'll go zero, one, two, three, four, all the way through and print something. So if we do that, if we bring this on over again, boom, now we have our list. Now, you may notice that we go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That is because in Python, the way that this works is that it is non-inclusive. So if I said 0 to 100, it would go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to 99 and stop. 
So if you want to go past 99, you can either do something where you say like plus one, or you can ensure that maybe your variable goes up one count higher. There's other ways to do this. I'll get into that in a different video, but right now I just want to kind of go with stuff that's very similar to VBA. Uh, the more you get acclimated with Python, you can write code far cleaner than VBA and far faster. So again, I'm trying to keep this tutorial very close to what you get with VBA because that is what I've worked with the most in a lot of my videos. So now that we've seen this, let's go ahead and do something else now. Football equals 100, 1,000, 10,000, and we're gonna tell it to print that range, so we'll just say 10,001. So we're gonna have it print that range. Now when we run this in VBA, it takes a little bit of time um, and it's done and it already did the 10,000 and that's how fast Python is So one of the advantages of this is that it can run through simulations like Monte Carlo's insanely fast So hopefully that was informative for some of you um, Hopefully it was simple to understand if you do have questions You can reach me on discord or you can reach me on Twitter at wagered on tilt um, again, today's video was not going to be super heavy into modeling. I do want to get these core concepts out there for everybody so that in the continuation of this series, when you start to dive into the other models that we're going to kind of tackle and walk through, you're going to be able to understand what I'm doing and why. And that's really the core piece to modeling is why someone's doing it. In the future, we're going to be learning how to do Monte Carlos. We're going to learn how to do Bayesian statistics. We're going to learn how to do other things like that that you can run through Python, which is far faster than Microsoft Excel and VBA. So one thing to note though, in the future, you will still want to use spreadsheets somehow. Um, I personally am using spreadsheets to load the data into Python and then export it out. Now others of you may know how to hook up the database and that is great. I do not want to go into database management or how to set up a database. So I want to try and stick with things that are very simplistic that anybody can do um, without having to be a DBA. I do want to point out that I am not an engineer nor a developer, um, but this is how I have learned how to write the code. So if you are a Python uh, developer and you have some comments on the code on, hey, you could clean it up this way, or I wouldn't really recommend doing it that way, feel free to drop a comment. I'm always wanting to learn more and more and try and improve my skill set. If there is content that you do want to learn that I haven't produced yet, or you want to have a deeper understanding of some of the previous stuff I've done, feel free to drop a comment below. Let me know what you want to see, uh, and I will add it to my backlog of videos that I'm going to try and produce throughout the year to try and get that information out there to help people. So again, that is it for today. So until next time, happy wagering.